Oh, you're so traumatized. It makes me want to cry. You dumb bitch. The case I went over in this video was the case of the Powell family. This case got brought up because a woman named Susan Powell, who was married to a man named Joshua Powell, had gone missing one day. And of course, Josh was the prime suspect. And you see, Josh had a dark upbringing. He displayed several signs that you would typically see from a serial killer from a young age. This included killing small animals, including his sister's pet hamsters and gerbils, threatening his mom with a butcher knife, and attempting to unalive himself on at least one occasion. But past this, fast forward a little bit, and Josh would meet his soon-to-be wife, Susan Susan Cox at his Institute of Religion. The two would get married and have two beautiful kids named Charles and Brayden. But something in Josh's brain switched. Susan kept a journal and in this journal she noted how controlling Joshua was becoming. She also put in a very haunting entry of this journal that if she died, even if it looked like an accident, it wasn't. Fast forward again and Susan would go missing and Josh would be the prime suspect. Due to their father being the prime suspect in a very touchy missing persons case, Charles and Brayden would be taken into custody. But one day Joshua had a scheduled monitored visit with his kids. A social worker named Elizabeth Griffin would come with the two kids and Josh would push her back, take both the kids inside of his house and lock the door. Now, after a long wait and a 911 call made by Elizabeth, the house would explode with Joshua, Charles and Brayden inside. The police considered the case a double murder. And look, I know it's an extremely dark case, but that's why I made this video. Why would you lie? And then I realized you're just as naive. The case of Adam Walsh. Adam was only six years old when he was kidnapped while shopping with his mom at a Sears. He was just checking out the toy department and the Hollywood police station was right across the street. His disappearance was quickly reported and a giant manhunt ensued. Sadly, just over two weeks later, his severed head was found in a drainage canal 130 miles away from where he was kidnapped. To this day, the rest of his body has never been found. Convicted serial killer Otis Toole initially confessed to Adam's murder. However, he was never convicted or tried because evidence was lost and he eventually recanted his statement. Adam's murder remained unsolved for over two decades. In 2008, Hollywood police closed the case and just said that Toole was the murderer and left it at that, despite the fact that Toole never did time for Adam's murder and died 12 years prior. It is because of Adam's family, though, that we now have the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The Slender Man Stabbing. Stabbing. Some kind of man. This sort of just happened. I've been trying to block out the screens all day. The girl in this video is 12-year-old Morgan Geyser, and in May 2014, her and Anissa Weir lured their friend into a forest to play a game of hide-and-seek. Anissa and Morgan pinned their friend Peyton Lutner to the ground and stabbed her 19 times, leaving her for death all in the name of Schlinderman. Peyton dragged herself to a nearby road until she was spotted by a man on a bike. She says to you what? Could you help me please? I've been stabbed multiple times. And was rushed to the hospital immediately. Luckily, she survived the brutal stabbing and was released from the hospital just a week later. While Anissa was empathetic and sorry for what the girls had done, Morgan showed no remorse. The two 12-year-olds were found not guilty due to mental disease and were committed to mental institutions for 25 and 40 years respectively. And that's the story of... This is the disturbing reason the most inbred family in America bark and grunt. Now, the Whitakers have been around for a while now, but how it all started is insane. Two identical twin brothers, Henry and John Whitaker, had a child each, John and Gracie, that ended up marrying and having a staggering 15 children together. And it also turns out that one of the twins, John, had Gracie with his cousin. The children have now grown up and live in a town called Odd. They're known to bark, grunt, and run away if approached by strangers. And big shout out to their neighbors, because they're known for being very protective protective of the family from outsiders coming in and making fun of them. It's believed that due to the severity of the inbreeding, a number of the children who actually made it through childhood suffer serious mental disabilities, including level 3 nonverbal autism, leaving individuals like Ray to only communicate through barks and grunts. The woman in this viral video, Omaima Ari Nelson, is an Egyptian model and nanny who was convicted of murdering her husband, Bill Nelson. She claims that on Thanksgiving Day 1991, Bill had sexually assaulted her in their California apartment. Following this, Omaima stabbed Bill with scissors and beat him violently with a clothes iron. After killing him, she started cutting up his body, removed his head, and removed his fingerprints by boiling his hands. She then took the leftover turkey from Thanksgiving dinner, mixed it in with Bill's body parts, and threw them away in the garbage disposal. Later, Omaima told her psychiatrist that she had cooked her husband's ribs in barbecue sauce and eaten them, and said, quote, It's so sweet. 
There's nothing sweeter than my husband's meat. Omaima was convicted of second degree murder and is now serving 27 years to life in prison. An NBA legend once got a 12 year old girl pregnant and the baby went to the NFL. Welcome back to the dark side of the NBA where we are breaking down the weirdest conspiracies in NBA history that have been proven true. And each day they get darker and darker. Carl Malone is perhaps a top five forward of all time. And he was the main player responsible for bringing the Jazz to back to back championships back in the 90s. But off the court, he was bad news. When he was 20 years old at Louisiana Tech, Malone met a 12 year old girl named Gloria Bell. Malone took the their relationship too far and ended up impregnating the minor. The girl's parents took him to court and Malone was confirmed to be the biological father from a paternity test. It was originally ruled that Malone would have to pay $125 a week in child support, but he refused to do so. He then reportedly settled the case with the Bells outside of the court for a confidential amount of money. But the kid Malone refused to help raise was Demetrius Bell. Bell ended up being a football star, even though he never played a down of high school football and didn't even go to college with the intent to play. But after walking on the team, he got drafted into the NFL and ended up playing for six seasons. So follow all he'll be able for more untold athlete stories. Let's talk about the Knights Lady. Oh, this is a true story. The Knights Lady terrorized the town of Chihuahua in Mexico in the year 2009. It all started in the town of Chihuahua, Mexico from the year 2009 to 2014. People will be going about their business and they will see a random lady on the rooftop of a building. They thought to themselves, this is very weird. What is that lady doing up there? Some of them would try to ask her, what are you doing up on that roof? But she didn't pay any attention to them. And since she was not disturbing anyone, they just left her. That was a big mistake. Because at midnight, she would come down from that roof, go into the building of the house and kidnap the child in that building. There were so many recorded cases of kidnapped children by the night lady. By the way, they call her the night lady because no one knows her name. One day, she kidnapped a very stubborn boy. He was not only stubborn, he was also smart. This boy found a way to free himself. When he freed himself, he turned around and saw her staring at him with a knife in her hand. The boy turned around and ran away. She tried to catch him, but the boy was running for his life. So you tell me who will run faster. The boy was able to escape her and he went straight to the police. After he described the way the woman looked to the police, this was the sketch that they made of her. This is the face of the night lady. In that same night, this picture was taken by a 14 year old girl. If you look very closely, you see her standing on the roof. But the girl who took this picture went missing shortly after. She was never found. All the children who she kidnapped were never found. She was never found. This is one of the biggest mysteries in Mexican crime history. How will all these children go missing and someone will tell me they can't find one woman of whom they have a picture. But tell me, what would you do if you saw a woman standing on your roof in the middle of the night? Robert Hansen, also known as Explaining the backstory to viral videos. The young lady in this viral video is Victoria Mendoza, who was 22 years old when she attacked her girlfriend of five years, 21 year old Tawny Bird. While driving home from visiting friends, the couple got into an argument over a boy and Victoria proceeded to pull over on the interstate and stab Tawny 46 times. She then called her sister, Spencer Mendoza, who arrived to find Victoria calmly sitting next to her dead girlfriend. Mendoza was charged with first degree murder and was sent to the Utah State Prison where she was allowed visitation rights. But due to social distancing, these visits were virtual on Zoom, which led to a friend of Victoria's recording videos of her that went viral on TikTok. She eventually lost visitation privileges and is currently serving 16 years in prison. This is the list of the five youngest killers in the United States. In 1925, Elsa Thompson was just seven years old and she put ground up glass on her younger sister's food and would routinely poison the food she made for family members and caretakers. In 1899, Lizzie Cook at just six years old set her two year old brother on fire. However, the outcome of her crime is difficult to research and not much is known. In 2000, an unnamed six year old boy brought a gun to school and fatally shot his six year old classmate, Kayla Rowland. He had a horrible home life and was known to have behavior issues like swearing at teachers, giving the 
finger and stabbing another girl with a pencil. And on February 29th, he went up to Kayla and said, I don't like you, before shooting her. In 1929, six-year-old Carl Newton Mahan got in a fight with an eight-year-old boy over some scrap metal they were going to sell. Carl went back to his house, grabbed his father's 12-gauge shotgun, and went back to the boy and shot him. In 1897, four-year-old Retta McCabe was described as being a smiling, normal child, but in an instant, she would turn into an uncontrollable evil demon. And during this phase, she threw her infant brother to the ground, which ended up being fatal. North Korea had just sentenced a two-year-old baby to life in a prison camp after their parents were found in possession of a Bible. The new report from the U.S. State Department details that Christians are perceived as a hostile class and a serious threat to loyalty to the state. If found with a Bible or prayer, people have faced imprisonment, forced labor, torture, sexual violence, and execution. In fact, a member of their own government was found with a Bible. And he was later executed in front of a crowd of 3,000 people. Here's why you never mess with a chimp at the zoo. Zoo. What you are seeing is footage of a chimpanzee hurling a bottle back at Zugo as after it was tossed in his enclosure. He throws it with bloody Hawkeye accuracy. And he even gives it a bloody run up as the bottle smashes through the girl's phone and hits her face. The girl was left with a cut on her forehead and a broken scream, but otherwise seems to be okay. The chimp has become known for hurling mud balls at people, but bottles is a new one. This case is extremely graphic and disturbing. This man advertised for a man to eat and disturbingly found a willing victim. This is the case of the Rottenberg cannibal. Armin Muse was abandoned by his dad at the age of eight and he lived with his mum in a huge isolated farmhouse in Germany. As a child, he secretly fantasized about killing and cannibalizing his friends so they couldn't leave him. In March 2001, he posted on a dark website called the Cannibal Cafe. He was seeking a young, well-built man who wanted to be eaten. Shockingly, he found someone willing to oblige. The man in question was Bernd Brands, a 43-year-old engineer from Berlin. On the 9th of March 2001, he made his way to Armin's house to undertake their sick fantasy. Armin gave Bernd 20 sleeping tablets, alcohol and cough syrup, and set up a camcorder. The pair agreed to cut Bernd's pee off and eat it together. Armin used a kitchen knife to perform the brutal act. He then fried it in garlic and wine to make it more palatable. However, he accidentally burnt it, so ended up feeding it to his dog. According to court officials who eventually viewed the sickening video that was taped, Burnt was extremely weakened from blood loss and unable to eat any of his pee. Armin ran his victim a bath and then read a Star Trek book. At this point, his victim was bleeding to death and floating in and out of consciousness. After praying, Armin stabbed his victim and then hung his body on a meat hook. Armin dismembered the body, stored the body parts in his freezer and gradually ate them. Armin was arrested a year after when a college student alerted authorities to a new advertisement for victims online. Police searched his home and made a horrifying discovery. They found some of the victim's body parts as well as the gruesome videotape. Armin was convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to eight years in prison. Interestingly, while in prison, he became a vegetarian. In April 2005, there was a retrial due to an appeal of his sentence. Prosecutors argued he should have been convicted of murder. In 2006, he was convicted of murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. Breaking news, the family of the boy who went missing after jumping off of a cruise ship has went to search for him and Bohemian officials have provided an update. 18-year-old Cameron Robbins disappeared last Wednesday after being dared to jump off of a sunset cruise in the Bahamas. A video surfaced of Cameron jumping where you could see a life preserver was thrown to him and as he was swimming to it, he turned away because of a figure in the water. Many believe it was a shark that pulled him under. In an update earlier this week, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force said that where he went overboard is quote, really shark infested. This week, his family visited the area and he disappeared. The United Cajun Navy Vice President said that the family traveled to the Bahamas to retrace his last moments. He said, quote, it took a lot of strength for them to go out there and stay for a few days. When we offered to take them out in a boat to the area where he went overboard and some of the area they were searching, they went. He said it must have been very emotional for them and by Sunday they decided they wanted to go home. He said that if they would have found any piece of clothing or clue that they would have extended the 48 hour search. However, they didn't get any indication and that is when they usually call it off. They said some of the family members included his mom, dad, brother and sister. After visiting the search site, his family paid tribute to him by saying that he was adopted shortly after birth in November of 2004. They said he liked to participate in every competitive activity that he could find. Eventually he chose baseball as his final love and that he was a pitcher. It has officially been nine days since he disappeared. I'll keep you guys updated. What do you think? Drop in the comments.
Let's talk about the horrifying murder of 16-year-old Nisa Gopal. Trigger warning for sexual assault and pedophilia. This was a really detailed case as most of them are, and I'm giving you as many details as I can here without making this too long. So if you want all the details I found about this case, you can check out my podcast, Ectoplasm and Evil, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Apologies in advance for any mispronunciations. On October 2nd, 2010, tourists were visiting the Medwini Creek near the Emerald Tower Resort. They saw a suitcase by the creek and went to check it out. Upon opening it up, they found the badly decomposed body of a young girl. Let's take it back to the beginning and give context as to how we got here. Nisa's biological father, Javed Gopal, met Nisa's mother, Bibi Sharima Gopal, while working at a restaurant. Nisa's father was married at the time, but ended his marriage to be with Bibi. They had two daughters, Nisa and Mary. Nisa was their firstborn. Unfortunately, a few years later, Nisa's father got sick and eventually died of liver failure. It is important to note that there are rumors that he was poisoned slowly using some sort of untreated traceable poison. However, these rumors are unfounded because there's no evidence seeing as the poison was untraceable. As it turns out, Bibi was having an affair with a personal trainer she met at a gym she joined named Jarvis Barry Small. He was also married. After Bibi's husband died, Barry moved in with Bibi, Nisa, and Mary. Barry was abusive and according to witness testimony, Nisa was being drugged and raped by Barry with her mother's knowledge. It's important to note that Nisa did report to the police that she she was being raped, however later she rescinded her statement and said that she lied. There were two motives for Nisa's murder. The first was to stop her from reporting the repeated rapes. The second was to remove her as the only person in the way of claiming the property which her father had left her after he died. Allegedly, Barry pressured Bibi into murdering her daughter and eventually she decided to go through with it. On the day of her murder, Nisa and Mary were taken to a place called Royal Castle for lunch. They were asked if they wanted to go for a long drive after and they said yes. The four then headed up the driveway with BB driving, Nisa in the passenger seat, Barry behind her and Mary next to him. They arrived near Splashman's Fun Park and BB turned onto a trail near the Emerald Tower Resort, which was Nisa's favorite place. They drove for approximately one mile and stopped. Barry got out of the car and dragged Nisa out by her neck while she was panting for breath. BB turned up the music in the car to make sure Mary Mary didn't wake up. Barry took Nisa around the car where she fell to her knees and screamed, Mary, Mary, wake up. Barry then took a piece of wood from the car and hit the back of Nisa's head. He continued to hit her as she laid on the ground. Her head was battered beyond recognition. The last sound Bibi heard from her daughter was a, quote, moaning sound.